there's a woman who occupies a unique place in Chinese history. Her name is Wu Zetian, and she's the only woman ever to have sat on the imperial throne as China's official ruler. Although the story of this remarkable woman is well known in China, many details of her life remain shrouded in mystery. It's the year 684 AD. In a young, according to Luo, Wu Zetian isn't just a usurper who has stolen the throne of China. She's also an evil born on the wrong side of the bed. Wu Zetian is illegitimate in more sense than one. So what exactly do we know about Wu Zetian's background? A memorial hall stands in Wu Zetian's ancestral home in Wenshui County, Shanxi Province. It dates from the time of the Tang Dynasty and was restored in the year 1145. Wu Zetian rose from humble beginnings. Her father, Wu Shiyu, was a timber merchant at a time when the social status of merchants was not high. However, the rebellion against the Sui Dynasty gave the family a chance to climb the social ladder. Wu lent his support to Li Yuan, who became Emperor Gaozu, the first ruler of the Tang Dynasty. Wu was given a post in the government as a reward and was also presented with a new wife, the second daughter of Sui Dynasty Prime Minister Yang Da. Wu spends the next few years moving between Luoyang, Sichuan and Yangzhou, and it's in this period that his wife gives birth to a little girl who will one day become Empress Zertian. But exactly where she was born remains uncertain. Wenshui, Luoyang, Chang'an, Guangyuan, and Yangzhou have all been suggested. But nobody knows for sure. However, other cities in China also stake a claim. Discoveries made by archaeologist Guo Mo Ruo in the 1950s seem to support the idea that Guangyuan is the true birthplace of Wu Zetian. In July 1954, Mr. Guo Mo Ruo left Beijing to examine a stone tablet that had just been unearthed in Guangyuan's Huangzi Temple. The tablet bears the name Guangzhang, and it appears to date from the late Tang Dynasty. However, interpretation of the inscription on the tablet is disputed by scholars. The first inscription claims that during the Jin Guang period, which began in 627, Wu Zetian's father, Wu Shi Yu, was governor of the prefecture. This much is uncontroversial. However, the sentence goes on to say, so she was born 
and the characters that follow are unclear. Guomor Raw interpreted them as in the prefecture. On Guomor Raw's reading, therefore, Guangyuan is the true birthplace of Wu Zetian. Back in ancient times, Guangyuan was known as Li Zhou. And because of its position in the mountains on the northern rim of the Sichuan Basin on the upper reaches of the Jialing River, it's long been regarded as a strategically vital strong point. It's here that the provinces of Sichuan, Shanxi and Gansu meet, and it guards the way through the Qingling Mountains. It's therefore no surprise that an important official like Wu Shiyu was sent here to serve as governor. But the question is, did he take his family with him? Certainly, Guo Mo Ruo's interpretation of the tablet inscription suggests that he did. And if he did, Wu Zetian was born here and not in Chang'an. However, the question of her true age also raises questions over her true birthplace. Historians have traditionally relied on works like Comprehensive Mirror for Aid in Government and The History of the Tang Dynasty for details of Wu Zetian's life. According to these accounts, she died in the year 705, aged 82. And if these accounts are accurate, that means she was born in the year 624. Her father, Wu Shiyu, was Minister of Works in Chang'an in that year. So, what evidence do we have to support the idea that Wu Zetian was indeed born in Guangyuan? Chen Yang is a Guangyuan-based scholar who's devoted his life to the study of Wu Zetian. He believes he can explain why traditional historians got her date of birth wrong. We the broken tablet with the illegible characters that led Guo Mo Ruo to the conclusion that Wu Zetian was born in Guangyuan also makes reference to a supernatural event that took place in the second year of Chen Guang's reign, two years into Wu Shiyu's governorship of Lijou. That story is told by locals to this very day. Strange purplish skies, weird clouds, phoenixes. Together it means just one thing. Someone has been born in that house who will one day rule China. It was for this reason that the 23rd day of the first month of the Chinese lunar calendar became a special day for women in Guanyuan, a day for women to put work to one side, enjoy themselves, and pay tribute to the extraordinary woman who overcame the prejudices of her day and rose to the very pinnacle of power. The Tang poet Li Shangyin also associated Guanyuan with the Empress. On his way back from exile in the year 851, he stopped in Guangyuan and wrote the following lines at Wu Longtan Lake in front of Huangzhou Temple, the reputed birthplace of the Empress. Yang, 
enjoys herself in the lake in which the dragon resides. They become affectionate with each other. Yang then gives birth to a daughter, Wu Zetian. Li Shangyin composed these lines more than 140 years after Emperor Zetian's death. But the association of Guang Yuan with the Empress seems to provide more evidence that she was born in this place. The 23rd day of the first month of the lunar calendar had long been established as a day of cultural importance in the lives of the people of Guang Yuan. Then 狂欢夜呀，等等很多的活动，举办这个活动，主要的目的也就是为了展示我们广元儿女的当代的新风采。So while Guanyuan residents are proud to call the city the hometown of Empress Wu Zetian, and women still row boats out on the lake, nowadays the emphasis of the festival is a more contemporary one. It's not certain where Wu Zetian was born, and in the absence of any conclusive archaeological evidence, it seems that scholars will continue to be divided over the exact location of her birthplace. But there are other things about Wu Zetian that we're not sure about. For example, it's not even clear what her legitimate title is. We know for sure that the name Wu Zetian was not used in her lifetime, nor indeed wasn't used in the period following her death. For a long time, historians referred to her as either Empress Wu, Madame Wu, or Empress Zertian. It wasn't until modern times that the name Wu Zertian came into usage. In the year 705, when the Empress fell seriously ill, her son, Emperor Zhongzong, conferred on her the title, the Great Zertian Empress. The name Zertian means corresponding to heaven. It's an allusion to this line from the Analects of Confucius. It is only heaven that is grand, and only Yao corresponds to it. At that point, Wu Zertian preferred to go under the name Wu Zhao. Zhao means the sun and the moon and the sky shed light on the earth. The character Zhao was, in fact, created by the Empress herself. She came up with 19 characters in all, but only this one has come down to the present day.
development. Life for the future empress changed dramatically when Emperor Taizong died. All the consorts and ladies-in-waiting who hadn't been favored with the attentions of the emperor were sent to a priory where they were to become nuns. Wu Zetian was one of the neglected consorts who was ordered to pack up her things and leave the palace for the Ganye Temple in Chang'an. And there she led a quiet life wrapped up in the intricacies of Buddhist thought, copying out sutras. But just as she had in the palace, she turned this dreary, sequestered life to her advantage. She began to write poetry, and one poem regarded now as a Tang Dynasty classic changed her destiny. It reads, I'm worried that I mistake red for blue. I look pale because I miss you too much. If you don't believe that I shed tears for you, you may look at my dresses in the trunk. This is a very good piece of art. How much do you think? I think this piece of art is a very good piece of art. This piece of art is a very good piece of art. This piece of art is a very good piece of art. This piece of art is a very good piece of art. That's what the art is a very good piece of art. The art is a very good piece of art. 唐朝是诞生李白、杜甫的时代呀、啊，你绝对不能认为武则天这首诗可以达到李白、杜甫、王维、孟浩然这个水准，但是它有它的好处，好处在于哪里呢？它这个感情非常的真挚，表现的很大胆，而且又非常的形象。看珠成璧似纷纷，什么意思呢？我啊，这个心思恍惚，所以把红的都看成绿的了。憔悴之离为一君，我为什么如此心不在焉，如此精神恍惚啊？是因为我在想你呀、啊！哎，这是一种很大胆的一种表白，啊，而且很形象，把红的都看成绿的了啊。然后不信笔来常下泪，如果你不信，我最近经常为你流下眼泪的话，开箱验取石榴裙，你打开我的箱子，看看我的石榴红裙上面是不是已经点染了斑斑泪迹。The poem is entitled Wishes of a Woman. It's a love poem written to Li Zhi, Emperor Gaozong of the Tang Dynasty. Before Wu Zetian left the palace, she and the Crown Prince Li Zhi had fallen in love with each other. When Li Zhi read the poem, he was deeply moved. After all, he loved Wu. He acted on his feelings and decided to bring Wu Zetian back to the palace. The various titles conferred on her from Meiniang to Zertian express different aspects of her character and development. It's also important to bear in mind that her record in the official histories is a mixed one. She is praised and blamed in equal measure. For example, in his novel, The Flowers and the Mirror, the Qing writer Li Rujian draws attention to the dictatorial side of her character. In the novel, he has her arrogantly issuing orders for flowers to bloom. According to the novel, it's the depths of winter and the flowers obey. All that is, except the peonies. Such is her displeasure that she has all the peonies cut down and burnt and then sent to Luoyang. Luan 你比如说，现在我冬天去看木兰干，你仔细一看，它就是黑色。These black-stemmed peonies are peculiar to Luoyang, and they're the favorite subject of local painters.
In many ways, a woman like Wu Zetian was an obvious target for critics. The very fact that she had risen so high posed a challenge to the feudal values of the day. Naturally, she became an object of scorn for the conservative male writers of the day. It's also important to remember that the episode in The Flowers in the Mirror, in which she orders the flowers to bloom and punishes the disobedient peonies, was based on one of her own poems. That poem reads, I will visit the garden tomorrow, tell spring to come immediately. It must come tonight, without waiting until tomorrow morning. The poem was written in the year 691, a year after Wu Zetian became empress. It can be interpreted in many ways. It could express a simple yearning. Equally, however, it could be seen as a knowing self-reflection on her resolution in politics, her determination and desire to get things done. Back then, resolution, determination and decisiveness were essential qualities for anyone who aspired to rule China. Without them, a ruler didn't have a hope. How did Wu Zetian feel when she was presented to court as a young girl? How, in her later years, did she feel about her life and achievements? What contribution did she make to Chinese history? What drove this extraordinary woman? Please join us for the next part of Wu Zetian.